Welcome back to For Real. Today we've got a bit of a serious topic to talk to you about. So we're asking the question today, is Cambodia safe? And when we say is Cambodia safe, it's really a shorthand way of asking what are the dangers associated with living in Cambodia long term? And are these risks ones that you should be willing to take? So we'll explore um, as many of these things as we were able to think of, which was actually eight different categories. So we're going to look at eight categories of things that we think can befall you as an expat living in Cambodia. And we're going to talk about um, the likelihood of those things happening and also the severity. So we're going to give them a rating out of five, a ranking um, on each of those um, scales. So likelihood on one hand and severity on the other. So... Um, yeah, let's get started. All right, so we're going to look at eight things today, eight different aspects in relation to the safety of Cambodia as a place to live. Now, do bear in mind that a lot of these things, um, the risks associated with them can be mitigated if you take some very simple steps. But the first thing that we're going to talk about today is accidents. And by accidents, I'm talking about road accidents. So things like motorcycle crashes, um, being hit by another car, perhaps um, being hit while you're in a minivan traveling somewhere, things like that. So obviously, if you don't ride a motorbike, you're going to be at a much less risk in this category. And if you do ride one, then you're putting yourself at risk. And even more so if you choose to ride at night. Because as you've seen through the news moto, a lot of the um, more serious accidents do tend to occur at night, particularly in Phnom Penh. And um, there does tend to be more likelihood of alcohol being involved, which um, generally means that the accidents are much more serious too. So if you're choosing to ride a motorbike, you're absolutely increasing your level of risk. But that doesn't mean by any stretch that we're saying don't do it because um, some of the most fun you can have in Cambodia is riding around on a moto and being able to choose where you go and when. So we would put this one at a likelihood of about two, two out of five. Obviously, the longer you stay in Cambodia, the higher that's going to get just because you're exposed um, just by frequency and length of time that you're here. So um, likelihood of two, but we said severity is five. So if something does happen, it's uh, likely that it's going to be quite serious. So we're talking about serious road accidents here, not your kind of minor bingle where, um, you know, both people just get up, get back on their bikes and keep going. So road accidents, that's one to think about. Next thing to think about in terms of whether or not Cambodia is safe is theft. So petty crime is definitely out there and... Um, it is something that does happen to people. So there's a lot of snatch and grab that goes on, particularly on the lead up to big uh, national holidays. So things like your phone is particularly at risk of being stolen, your wallet. And if you have a laptop, things like things that are worth a lot and very, um, very easy to transport are generally the things that obviously are going to get stolen. So um, there are places in Phnom Penh where you would not leave your phone or wallet sitting on the table while you're having a meal. And I guess that makes sense wherever you are to not, not do that. So we said that the likelihood of this happening is about a two. And in terms of severity, um, it's more of an inconvenience than, um, than a big danger to yourself. So we said that severity was only a two just because there wasn't actually physical harm or anything involved in this one. So likelihood of two, severity of two. Please feel free to disagree in the comments. Let's have a look at the next one. Okay, this is a bit of a serious one. So this is health issues. So when I say health issues in this category, I'm talking about becoming sick or unwell while you're in Cambodia. So that is things like I don't know, being diagnosed with a cancer or um, having a heart attack, having a stroke. And um, all of these things are very serious and obviously can happen anywhere, but we're looking particularly at the Cambodian context. Now, um, a friend of ours has just um, had a stroke in Cambodia and he had he did all the right things. He had his health insurance up to date, had a really good policy. But because he was diagnosed with high, high blood pressure in 2007, his um, health insurance company is refusing to pay for the repatriation flight back to the UK. So um, the likelihood of this happening, I guess, as you get older, it is about a two, we would say. Um, the older you get, the more likely these things are, I suppose. But the severity can be a five. And we're just seeing that um, even having insurance and thinking that you're covered is not necessarily, um, you know, 
going to help you too much if these things do happen. So a bit of a serious one and something to think about because um, these things do happen. Let's have a look at the next one. What have we got? Oh, okay. On a similar kind of um, note to the health, we have this time diseases. And in this category, I'm talking about things like dengue fever, Japanese encephalitis, rabies. So dengue fever and Japanese encephalitis are transmitted by mosquito and rabies, of course, by animals um, infected with the disease and then biting you. So I have, as you know, been chased by dogs many times. Um, the likelihood of them having rabies is obviously quite low because we were always in urban areas, but it's still there. And if it does happen, it is quite serious. Um, things like dengue fever, um, dengue fever is probably not as serious, um, makes you feel like rubbish, obviously, but it's probably not going to kill you. It may or may not require a stay in hospital. Um, Japanese encephalitis can be incredibly serious. Um, most people uh, never come into contact with it, but if you're one of the unlucky people that does, it can be um, fatal and very rapidly fatal as well. So taking into account all three of those things, we said that the um, likelihood of those things was about a two, um, probably higher if you're just talking about the mosquito-borne things like dengue, and the severity is a four. We say anyway. All right, moving along. Okay, bit of a change of pace here. This one is unexploded ordnance. So things like um, landmines or explosives. So coming into contact with those things when you're in the kingdom, it is possible. And uh, again, in the news moto, we have come across um, quite a few stories in the past about um, people, uh, you know, working in their fields, on farms, and um, uh, disturbing some sort of unexploded ordnance and dying as a result of that. And we've also seen um, stories of, there was um, an incident in Siem Reap where they were just digging a new um, gutter or trench beside um, the high school. So in the middle of town, high traffic area, and they found all of these um, unexploded hand grenades. So it's very real and at the moment only two provinces in Cambodia have actually been declared uh, clear of landmines or unexploded ordnance and of those two provinces one is Kep and if you know anything about um, the geography of Cambodia Kep is a minuscule province so we're talking about a very small um, proportion of the country that has been declared mine free at this stage so we would say that the likelihood of um, this being an issue for you in Cambodia is a one but obviously, if it does happen, the severity is going to be a five. So that's that one. All right, we have three more to go. Let's have a look at oh, violent crime. So when I talk about violent crime in this context, I'm thinking about things like um, rape or assault, you know, like a serious assault. And as we know, Cambodia is a very, very safe place in terms of these kinds of things, particularly as a foreigner, as an expat in Cambodia, it's very, very unlikely that you're going to experience these things. If you're home and tucked up in bed by a reasonable kind of hour, then I guess, um, <laughs> you know, you're, you're even less likely to um, be the victim of assault. And um, because, you know, nothing good happens after midnight, as they say. So the likelihood of this happening, we would put that at about a level one, um, probably lower actually, but because our scale is one to five, we'll give it the lowest possible, which is a one. But the severity um, obviously is going to be a five. Okay. Two more to go. Let's have a look. Which one shall we do? Okay, let's do this one. All right. So number seven on our list of things that can be a risk to you while you're in Cambodia is addiction. And I'm talking here about alcoholism and drug addiction. So these things, and the reason I thought to include this is because these things are so readily available in the kingdom, particularly alcohol, cheap alcohol is um, just everywhere. 50 cent beers, you know, that's your typical, typical kind of thing. But also in the shops, you know, you can buy a litre of hard spirits for under, well under $10. So 
it's very, very inexpensive to write yourself off basically. And, um, because it's so cheap and so accessible, I guess, um, if you are the kind of person that has a tendency towards that kind of thing, then it's something that you really, really need to be careful of. So we would say um, the likelihood overall, because it just depends on your personality, who you are, the likelihood overall is a one, but um, the severity, um, if that does happen, if you go down that path, is going to be a five, because you're not going to have the support mechanisms around you that you would um, back in your home country. Um, things like family and friends to see this happening to you. So you're kind of you can get yourself into a vacuum where you surround yourself with people that are doing a similar thing and it becomes very much normalized. So yeah, severity is five just because of the lack of, um, the lack of friends and family around you to pull you up and get you back on track. All right. And the last one. Okay. Number eight. So, uh, this one is scams. So by scams, we mean getting ripped off. So paying more than you should for certain things or um, being asked to pay more for certain things. So whether or not you go through and actually pay for that um, is something that you definitely need to look out for in the kingdom. Now, look, most of this is low level stuff. It means just being charged a little bit more at the market or, you know, if you get a tuk tuk, the guy putting an extra little bit on because you're an expat or a foreigner. And that, by and large, we just accept that as part of life. It's fine. It's a small amount of money. These people have very little and we're okay with that. Um, if you're talking about um, a bigger thing like buying a motorbike, be very, very careful. Or even if you're going to buy a car, be very careful with that kind of thing. Get it checked out. Make sure that you know what you're doing because there is a chance that um, you'll be, you know, taken for a ride, pardon the pun. <laughs> so things like if you're buying a motorbike, you need to make sure that it's got um, the registration card with it, because if it doesn't, um, it's worth a lot less than if it does. And you will find that when you come to resell it, you can't get very much money for it. So what is the likelihood of being scammed? We said it's between three and four. So probably that low level stuff, you know, it's very, very likely that's going to happen, maybe even a five. So low level ripoffs are about a five, um, higher level ripoffs, let's say they're about a three. And the severity, um, of course, you're going to be looking out for these things. So you're not going to become victim to a high level scam, which means we're talking only about low level scams, which means that the severity for you is going to be limited to a one, which is great news. All right. So that brings us to the end of our eight things that can be a risk to you while you're in Cambodia. Now, overall, Cambodia, we found to be incredibly safe. I um, went a lot of places by myself, as you know, through watching our videos over time. And I never felt threatened or, um, you know, like anything bad was going to happen to me. Probably I was, I was more at risk of, you know, tripping over and falling than I was of anybody actually, um, you know, trying to cause me harm. So all in all, um, Cambodia is very, very safe. But take precautions, um, you know, wear mosquito repellent as much as you can. The mosquitoes that carry dengue fever are not just mosquitoes that bite at dusk and dawn. They bite all through the day. So be really careful about that. Um, have vaccinations if you can before you come. Have medical or travel insurance. Although, as we've seen, sometimes that's not going to cover you in those really awful um, situations. Um, look out for people that you're with. Um, look out for signs of um, behavior that's, that's causing them um, bigger issues. So yeah, do all of those things, take precautions, be sensible, and you'll have a fantastic time in the kingdom and you will find yourself not at high risk of any of these things happening. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.